Hello and welcome back to part two of the uh, MAX 232 serial transceiver receiver chip uh, lesson, lesson number five. In our little set of lessons we're going to be looking at how to code our uh, tr receiver transceiver chip and basically put write some code where we can just basically use a terminaling application like I mentioned before like TerraTerm or HyperTerm or whatever you have uh, available and um, I'm, I'll post uh, some links for some different uh, terminaling applications in uh, the description just because uh, there's a lot of free ones out there that are very easy to use. Um, I'm also going to post some code for some freeware serial port analyzing software because it is nice to have a serial analyzer handy just, um, just so you can see exactly what is traversing the port just in case you want to do some debugs or whatever you can take and use some serial analyzing to see what's being shot across. So I'll, I'll put those uh, links in the description. So um, just to help you guys out, uh, let's take a look at the uh, at the code. Um, again, like I said, I kind of just pre-compiled some code real quick. Um, we are going to be using uh, right now the software UART setup, and I'll show you the difference uh, how to set up in the code for using the hardware uh, UART that uses the that uses buffers to hardware buffers to store information. But basically, what we got here is we've included our our 886 header file, which you know, same method as I showed you in I think the very first lesson, how to set this up in uh, MP Lab. Uh, basically, we got we got our include, got our fuses set, got our delay set, um, and now we're going to use this RS232 command that comes in CCSC. Basically, you're going to then, I mean, it's pretty much exactly how you see it. You set the baud rate. You can do 9600. You can do the I think. Uh, 19200 you can do you know all the different baud rates um, depending on your oscillator um, you want to make sure that uh, your oscillator can handle uh, whatever baud rate you're dealing with if you're using the internal oscillator um, check your data sheets see how fast that you can get it to go because you may have to um, hang off a external oscillator or may even jump up to one of the 18f uh, families uh, of, of processors that way uh, you can get the faster speeds for faster RS-232 communication but for us we're keeping it very basic we're just doing the 9600 uh, nothing, nothing major we're not sending a whole ton of data so we don't have to worry about speed then you use the command xmit for the transmit and then like I said before we chose pin, pin C6 as our transmit pin and then our receive pin is pin C7 now, if you're wanting to, this is where it comes, if you want to use your UART, you want to use that, then some chips will have two UARTs on it. Um, ours, in our case, only has one. But basically, I'm just going to go real quick, just so you guys, you can see that it's here. But there's the CCS help. This is very, very useful for finding commands. So let's type in the RS-232 command and see what it looks like. It gives you a good rundown description on all the different options you can choose with all this. You can set stop bits, you can I think you can even do parity somewhere. You can do parity checking if you want to. Well or maybe not. I'm sure there's a way to do it. I just I'm I, I don't really use parity checking though. There it is. Yeah. Here's the parity checking. I knew it was in there. So you can do parity checking, you can do all kinds of cool stuff with it. Um, but here's basically your hardware stuff. You see your UART one and UART2 and that's for now in the chip that we're using we only have one UART but you want to pay attention to which pins that's on if we can go back here to our data sheet here you see your UART you've got your it's they're labeled as RX and TX as your pins and if you go up uh, in your data sheet back to your package Let's just let's just grab you know, let's just grab a package, just anything. Uh, 887. Well, it there are, these are all the same. Basically, C6 and C7. See that C7 is receive, C6 is transmit. Just like just like we had in our in our six is transmit, seven is receive. See that. So basically, these two pins. If you're using the hardware URART, you cannot connect to any other pin 
to use the hardware UART. Now to use software, you can do you know whatever. You just pick two I/O pins, and make one receive and one transmit, and you're good. But if you're wanting to use the hardware one, you have to make sure you get on your chip whichever pick device you choose. You want to make sure you find out which which pins are the receive and the transmit that lead to your your hardware UART buffers and whatnot. So keep that in mind if you're wanting to use hardware UART. And basically what you do is on the end of this, to change this, you're just going to put a comma and you're going to say UART, in our case, 1. And that's it. And now we're using the hardware buffers. See, we get zero errors and zero warnings. But that way, then now we're saying that pin C6 and C7 are our hardware UART. So, but in our case, we're just going to use the software one. So we'll take that out. But like I said, just make sure you look at your data sheets. And again, you can look at this uh, help because there's lots of very helpful stuff. It gives you all descriptions on what it does, gives you a brief example, um, and even gives you, they have,